Hey y'all, it's Kate and Bree. Welcome to the fifth episode of the Texas Missing Podcast. If you are not following us on social media, number one, you should. But also we made an announcement this week that we are going to start dropping episodes once a week instead of bi-weekly. So we are really excited about that. Like we also talked about last week, we're trying to do a little bit something different with our episodes. So last week, I kind of took the reins and I'm the one that investigated and and Brie was more of the the listener who asked questions. And so this week it will be the opposite. Brie will be in charge of the case and I will be here to ask questions. So let's get into it. All right. Uh, This is the case of David Arias. David went missing in June of 2019 from Fort Worth, Texas. About five weeks before... David went missing. He actually moved to Texas from San Diego, California. David's wife stated that the last time she saw him was June 25th, 2019. She said that she had picked him up from work that day. They started driving, got into an argument, and she dropped him off at a mobile gas station on the corner of Randall Mill Road and 820. She stated that David was on drugs, and so she made him get out of the car and told him to Uber home. And then the last place that he was seen was at the Gramercy Center building on Manhattan Boulevard. So the wife, and I don't know what her name is because although I did get a police report, all of the names were redacted. So I have no idea what his wife's name is because I did get a report from Fort Worth Police Department, uh, but all of the names in it were redacted. So I could never figure out what her name was. Anyway, she filed a report on July 5th, 2019 in Richland Hills, but uh, the police wouldn't say if it was a missing person report or some other type of report. So I'm just going to assume that it was a missing person report. They would confirm. They wouldn't confirm one way or the yeah. other. Um, so that was about 10 or 11 days after he went missing. Mind you, this is his wife and they live together. And she, on the 25th of June, told him to find his own way home. So she didn't report him missing for 11 days. Was there like any articles or records kind of stating why she waited so long? No. In fact, there's no like news articles or anything about David. Period. Yeah, it was it was yeah, it was it was difficult to find any information. So everything that I have is based on I mean, it's from the police report yeah. from Fort Worth. So she filed in Richland Hills July 5th. Well, his David's niece, who lives in San Diego, filed a missing persons report with Fort Worth PD. And she did that on July 23rd, 2019. And this is kind of where it starts to get a little bit weird because stories start to change and um, it's just, it gets a little wonky. So according to Fort Worth's police report, David's niece who, again, I didn't get the name because it was redacted. She stated that, you know, David was last seen on June 25th, 2019 at the Gramercy Center building. Allegedly, David had borrowed a cell phone from his friend to call his wife for a ride home, and it's unknown what time he did this. David's niece said that their family in San Diego had been hearing odd stories about David and his wife's behavior since they had been living in Texas. The niece stated that David had contacted a realtor about purchasing property with his brother on June 14, 2019. So June 14th is when he contacted this realtor. Mm -hmm. But they were outbid for the properties, according to the realtor. And the niece was able to talk to this realtor And she was told that David had told the realtor that he was going to buy this property with his brother, Alex Arias. But David doesn't have a brother. Oh. Yeah. And And this was information that was pulled from the realtor. So she was working directly with him. Right. 
And so there is no Alex Arias in that family. Um, she, the, nie- the niece also said that David doesn't have good credit and he really wouldn't have been in a position to purchase property. Um, I guess he had a job, but him and his wife were semi-homeless, you know, not like completely destitute, but mm-hmm. also didn't have like a reliable place to live. The realtor told the niece that the main contact that he had with David was through email only. Mm -hmm. Um, And the niece also found this weird because David's spelling and grammar was terrible. And so the niece further went on to say after she contacted this realtor and heard all this weird information, the family, David's family contacted David's wife about him being missing, but her stories started to change and they weren't making sense. The first story she told was that the same story that she had kind of given Richland Hills, that she had gotten into an argument, he had become abusive, he was on drugs. She kicked him out of the car and told him to Uber home. So were they living in Richland Hills at the time? I'm just trying to figure out why she made the report in Richland Hills. Yeah, so they were living in Richland Hills at the time, um, but he went missing from Fort Worth. Okay, okay. So it it made more sense to file in Fort Worth than it allegedly Mm -hmm. than to file in Richland Hills. Unless he actually went missing in Richland Hills. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the wife was the last one to see him, apparently. The wife changed her story to David's family from him being kicked out of her car because he was on drugs and being abusive to the fact that he disappeared from work, that she hadn't even seen him that night. So um, her story has changed. So so she she went from, yeah, I did see him, I kicked him out of the car, to he went to work and I didn't see him after that. Yeah. Okay. Those and are big changes. I know. And I'm going to let you know right now, there's no supplements that I could find to this report. So I'm not really sure how much follow-up has been done on this report. Mm-hmm. Um, or if it was just a report that was taken and they're like, so long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So apparently David's niece had also been hearing rumors that David's wife's son who's an adult at this point, didn't like David and had been trying to frame him for stealing drugs from a drug dealer. Um, And this is based on what the niece is saying. So I don't know how accurate any of that is. Does the niece live in California too? Yeah, the niece lives in San Diego. His whole family lives in San Diego. Okay, so he's the only one that is in Texas. Yeah, him and his wife came to Texas. Okay. Um, I don't know if... Her son lived in Texas, just because it doesn't say it. And I couldn't find, I don't even know what her name is, so let alone her son. Um, but the niece was saying that they, that the family was questioning David's wife's credibility anyway, because they had found like three different IDs with different names and social security numbers on them. Um, you know, some kind of like, chest or trunk that had been left at David's mom's house in San Diego. So they had stored property at David's Mm -hmm. mom's house, and I guess they were going through it, and they had found, you know, multiple IDs with multiple names for her, with her picture on them, and different social security numbers. I wonder if they even knew who, like, her legitimate name was. I don't know. Yeah, it's really weird. It gets weirder. So, in between the time that he went missing and the time that the niece filed the police report, the niece's other uncle, one of her other uncles, got a text message saying that these people had David and that they would return him for $5,000. And they have, they didn't recognize the number. They have no idea. Was it a Texas number? I don't know, because it didn't say. I don't know. I don't know what the number was. That's really bad, but also only $5,000. I know. (laughs) And like, 
Was it David? Was yeah, it David's yeah. wife? You know, or like the son, like her son. If he if if he was trying to like frame David, which is super convoluted to like include a drug dealer in framing someone. Uh, it's odd. Um, yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Well, and then the wife, David's wife, allowed his phone to be disconnected, his cell phone service to be disconnected. So nobody could reach him on his cell phone anyway because she disconnected the service. And that's fairly quick after him disappearing. Yeah, like it's because like this is what, all within a month. Like, what do you know? Like, yeah. She knows something. Right. She felt comfortable enough that, oh, you know, he's talking, he won't be using this anymore. Yeah. And that's okay. what I thought too. I was like, this is very weird. For me, the weirdest part is the text message uh, kind of mixed with the rumors of David's wife's son trying to frame him for stealing narcotics from a drug dealer. Yeah. Did did his family respond to the text messages? Did they like did they report that to police? No, and none of that was included. This report was bare bones basic. Hmm. And I don't I don't think anybody tried to follow up with anybody else because there's no there was no supplement attached. Do you think that not following up was more of that they were semi homeless. Was there was there drug usage? Like, so there was definitely drug usage, and there. I'll, okay, so along with homelessness, there's typically a mental health component that comes along yeah. with that. I don't know if David had any kind of mental health issue yeah going on or if it was just drugs or or both right i mean he was employed and they did have a place to live tentatively i mean kind of yeah well i mean i i'm i'm going back to um the realtor did she ever see him in person or was all of the... So all the communication was through email. Yeah, through email or text. So or... she she's she doesn't even know if he was the one that she was responding with. Yeah, and I don't know how David was even putting in bids on property. So I'm not like a real estate, you know... Guru. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't really know how all that works. But I would think to put a bid on a piece of property you would have to show that you are able to afford it yeah you know what i mean like yeah. you have to show something that says some kind of documentation saying hey i've got the money that i can put forward for this what was the date difference in between when he was doing all this with the realtor and in the day that he went missing he was doing this with the realtor on june 14th is mm -hmm. when he put in bids okay and was outbid he went missing on June 25th. Okay, so, so not very far. 11 days. Okay. Yeah, that's... I mean, the realtor, like, she doesn't even know if that's who she was really even dealing with. It could have been his wife. It right. could have been someone else, but... And we don't know if that was the day he actually went missing either. Because that comes from the wife. The wife. That that's, was the last time that she saw him. Yeah. But she also said he went missing from work. And then she said... She kicked him out of the car, so who knows? I mean, I find it weird that, you know, may maybe more is being done than we know. Obviously, that's a regular occurrence, especially with police departments, current missing person cases. But that would have been major red flags for her to change up her story so much. Like, the difference in between, oh, yeah, you know, we got into a fight and I kicked him out of my car to, oh, well, he went to work and he didn't come home. Right. Well, and she said this to the family, not to police. police. But I think only Richland PD contacted her. I don't know if Fort Worth was ever able to get a hold of her or not. Yeah, that's that's just odd. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is really weird. And I mean, it's a lot suspicious, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, because anything could have happened. He could have left of his own free will but then why wouldn't he contact his family he's yeah. clearly very close with his family yeah I, I would think that he would definitely contact his family and but you know like you brought up earlier there was a component of drugs potential mental health mental illness but you know there is drug induced psychosis so maybe it was brought on by drugs um you know there's there's endless possibilities of what happened but i do think that there is a lot of room to investigate 
Um, which could be happening. We just don't see it. But I think that none of that makes sense. Yeah. There's a lot of questions that are unanswered and a lot of theories that formulate because of the wife. Yeah. Well, and he's very, he was very difficult to find information on generally. Mm -hmm. So um, I went through kind of all of our avenues of research and locating somebody and I couldn't find like boo on him. Yeah. Except for, you know, in San Diego, he had two cases against him. I couldn't pull those cases. So I don't know what they're for. I do know they're criminal cases. Uh, I would assume probably drugs or something, mm -hmm. but that's all I, that's the only things I could find. I couldn't find him mm -hmm. any past residences, anybody that he's related to. I could not find. I checked, you know, all of our background check yeah. sites i checked social media i couldn't find anything um any of his family that were trying to get a hold of him beforehand so like his niece and uncle have they like have you seen anything with them trying to find him or locate no. him or no. even put out like bulletins about it no i have not found bulletins i have not found flyers and i'm sure they're doing something in California, I don't, I, you know, I really don't know because he went missing here. He, yeah. He clearly made it here. He had a job here. Like he was, he was here in Fort Worth for five weeks or in the DFW area. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, so I would, you know, it should be a focused search here. Yeah. There's not really a lot you can do in California. Hmm. I know. If I was the police officer taking the report, I would have wanted to see the text message that said that they had, I would want that number. I mean, there's a lot that I would have put into the report that just isn't here. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of information that you could have asked mm -hmm. while you had that person on the phone. Well, yeah, and, that, and that's where I'm coming from with there's so much potential for this case to at least investigate her, the wife, of course, but then also investigate that avenue like, speaking to the realtor again, looking through those emails, you know, they were saying that he didn't have very good grammar. Okay, well, like, let's analyze the emails. Who was really sending these emails? Right. Um, the number that was sent to the family. Like, okay, let's analyze maybe who sent this. Now, granted, um, you know, numbers generated from WhatsApp and sites like that, they can't be tracked. They're essentially throwaway cell phone numbers. But there's always a chance to at least look and investigate. Okay, well, where did that come from? Because, I mean... He's apparently missing, but you get a text message that people have them and you can get them back for $5,000. It sounds like extortion. Right. Or he is, I mean, it could be him yeah. needing $5,000 and not wanting to ask his family, but it doesn't seem, that doesn't really seem logical or plausible or even probable because he does sound like he was really close with his family. Yeah. So I would think, you know, I don't think that he would go four years at this point without contacting them. Yeah, that's... I mean, I just... <laughs> I just want to, like, know more about the wife. I know, and I that know. Thing, I feel like she holds most of <clears throat> this information. She absolutely does. Especially because she was probably the last person to see it. That... The... The first story that she told is probably the most closest to the truth mm -hmm. um, whether it's the truth or not I don't know but she probably was the last person to see him they probably did get into an argument he probably was on drugs did she kick him out of the car you know in the middle of Fort Worth or did something else happen who knows yeah but if it was just one of those things where you were in a fight and you dropped him off you know that's I mean just that that happens, but not putting any effort into finding him that we know of. Not even filing a missing person report until July. Yeah. Like, and I, I get it was the beginning of July and it was the end of June, but that's a 10 or 11 day. I don't like that, I'd that, be the 31 I'd be there. month day thing. Yeah. But I mean, I would, I would be there immediately. I would be doing everything I can. I'd be doing posters and all that. So the fact that she's not. It always lends itself to, okay, she, she already knows what happened. So right. she's not going to waste any time, you know, even pretending like, oh, I'm going to 
help try and find him. Like, you already know what happened. Yeah. And now his cell phone was disconnected in that first month period. And I don't know. It doesn't lend itself to good news. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and she's kind of pushing pushing herself away from the case, I would say, especially with cutting off the cell phone. You know, she and, you know, I don't even know about this case. Where Like, where did you find this at? <laughs> but this was on... Texas DPS missing okay. persons. Yeah, he was listed on Texas DPS missing persons, so he's still considered missing. And did they have? Um, so I know that they put. Sometimes they do runaway. Sometimes they just do missing, or they do missing endangered. Do you remember what they labeled him as? So he was listed as other. I know the typical missing persons are either, like you said, runaway, mm-hmm. endangered, foul play. Um, so he was listed as other. Do you think it's just because the lack of information right now? Or maybe the information that we have, that you've found is more of just theory and hearsay and it hasn't been actually given to police or it hasn't been? Well, it's been given to police, but it's all rumored. Yeah. So, you know, it's coming from his niece in California, most of this information, okay. or his family in California. Okay. Family, yeah. So... You know, it might have been stuff that had been told to them from David himself. Um, And, you know, maybe he was saying that kind of stuff in a psychotic episode or something or a drug-induced state. Yeah. You know, that my wife's son, so my stepson, is trying to have me framed for stealing drugs from a drug dealer. Like, it sounds implausible. (laughs) (laughs) It's a little over the top. I can think of other ways to to frame someone and not. So I'm, I'm not for sure about that. But, yeah. but yeah. I, I honestly, I can't imagine him going this long without contacting his family. But also, it's very weird that, you know, I did social media searches and I couldn't really find very much about him at all. Mm-hmm. I could not find family posting about him at all. Fort Worth has posted... I think one post showing he's a missing person. Like 2019? Yeah, it was August 2019. Yeah, because what did you say? That there hasn't been anything, any type of post since 2019. And there's no updates, anything like that. No, I did see a comment Mm -hmm. from 2020 Mm -hmm. from some lady on Facebook who I tried to reach out to also. Um that said that they were working, I guess, a really big lead in this case that, you know, could break the case. But I don't know who that lady is, and I don't know what she... She lives in Waxahachie, so you don't I don't think she's like family. Connection. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't think he had family here. I don't know why they came to Texas. Yeah. Well, and he said that there was an overwhelming amount of comments that were suspicious of... The, the wife. wife, yeah, because I think the the main story that I saw from some of the posts is the original story that the wife gave that they got into a fight and he got out of the car and that was the end of it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not for sure if they're theorizing just based off that initial response from her or if they've also heard the other response that she gave for the different story of, you know, he went to work and... She, she never saw him again and then subsequently turned off his phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, and all of that was, that came directly from the police report, from okay. Fort Worth's police report. Okay. So that's all, that all came from the police report itself. Well, and like we said earlier, we don't know if there's a break in the case because we're not privy to that because it's, it's open. So yeah. very well could be something going on that we just don't know about. Yeah. Uh, and I really, I couldn't figure out what the wife's name is, so... Uh, you know, I have no idea if she's been arrested or not. I have no idea. Yeah. And it was never big in the news. Like, this missing person who... It's a suspicious missing person for me. Like, let's be honest. This is weird. And it it did not make the news. I could not find any news reports on it. Well, do you think that it's because of the potential that there were drugs involved? That he was you know, of a lower class and you know that people of lower class that do go missing, they don't get as as much media coverage. 
I don't know, our first episode we carry we we covered Jared mm-hmm. and his case got a bit of uh media attention and his was also, you know, possibly drug related yeah. circumstances. So like I don't think necessarily that it that it is because he, you know, possibly that it possibly could have been drug related or mental mm-hmm. health induced or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I don't think it's, somebody didn't make a big enough stink about it. Yeah, well, and I, I personally think the circumstances led itself to being a case that should be examined much further or at least put on a little bit more media coverage so people kind of have a better idea about it because I didn't know about it and I feel like some of these circumstances are like oh okay like there's some leads on this yeah that should be explored yeah well and if the wife wanted to take this guy out I don't know what her stature looks like what she looks like I but David is 5'4", mm-hmm. and he weighed between 140 and 160 pounds. So he's a little fellow, right? Like, he's he's a small guy. So just to go into further detail about David's descriptors, like I said before, he's 5'4", between 140 and 160 pounds. He's a Hispanic male with brown hair, brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a red checkered shirt, blue pants, and work boots, allegedly, He has a tribal dragon tattoo on his right shoulder, a two-inch scorpion on the back of his neck, and he's got the name Ashley tattooed on his chest. David also goes by the nickname Cacho, and I have no idea what that means or what it stands for. It's spelled C-A-C-H-O. As always, his photo and all of his information will be posted on our social medias at The Texas Missing. So make sure you like and follow. And then also make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast. And I think that's that's it. So I'm Kate. And I'm Bree. And this is The Texas Missing Podcast.